Scott Bode here with Steed Auto Sports. Today, we're going to show you behind the scenes video of the True Street Cruise with me and Edelbrock's David Page that we did in our Steed of Silver Bullet. Now, as you know, we headed down to the NMRA Spring Break Shootout for the season opener event, and our Silver Bullet was ready to party a little too hard. Ended up getting disqualified, but during this cruise, you're going to see what we did leading up to the event to try to make the event happen, which we ultimately did, and all of our great supporters that helped make it happen. All right, now that we're on the road, so tell me a little bit about what you guys have been through with the car and the whole trip for the last 48 hours getting to the racetrack and making a pass today. Wow, uh, last 48 hours have been crazy, right? So after our awesome win at my nationals and true street that you guys came out to uh we said how do we turn it up how do we get the program better and that was to go with a better set of rotating assembly right stronger rotating assembly turn the boost up add a little more timing and fuel to it and uh it was a mad scramble like everything not everything works out like you think it's going to of course and the last 48 hours we got the blower case in uh, it was freshly ported from Brett Barber out at Airflow Solutions. And uh, then poor Jamie, our tech, gets sick, right? Goes home sick, uh, comes back the next day, goes, throws it together. Oh, we have no supercharger oil. Oh my goodness. Order supercharger oil. It comes in a day later. Gosh, this is longer than 48 hours. Anyway, it's been a hectic, hectic week. But so that comes in a day late. We get it together on Thursday. And it sounds like an old school Vortec S-Trip. It's howling like the bearings are bad everywhere. And it's like, how could this be? Uh, first thing I do, I reach out to you. You put me in contact with your guy out there in California who was a great help. He's like, anytime somebody's like, okay, it could be three things. It's like, oh, okay. We're gonna dial this in pretty quick. It could be this. Nope, we got the right amount of oil. We got four ounces, not six. Okay, what about this? Nope, that, that's like that, okay. Well, did you do this? Yeah. We did that. Oh, shoot. Okay, the rotors are out of balance. So basically, the bolts that hold the rotors together, which are spinning, creating all the boost, Jamie, our tech, during the disassembly process, he loosened those up, not knowing if those had to be undone. He said Eden's real tight-lipped on the torque spec. They got a fixture, you name it. There's no way you can fix it. He goes, there's a chance you can run it for a couple days and it'll be fine. But when you got a brand new short block, yeah, and we were supposed to be racing in 24 hours, we ain't got a couple days. So this all happened just a... That was on Thursday. This was Thursday. And this is Saturday, Saturday now. Saturday. Yeah. It's two days ago. So he says you need a new rotor, uh, what's it, a rotor pack. Yeah, the rotor pack. So reach out to you. You, uh, once again, come through. And it's, it's why I posted the way I did on my Facebook post like that. It's the people you surround yourself with you know, when adversity happens, how, how do they respond? How do they come up with, you know, if we're warranting an item or a control arm, what do we do to get that racer back on the road right away? So same thing, you said, Scott, don't worry about it. We got one in California. Where do you need it delivered? It was to Valdosta. And you sent me the tracking number. I was outside, I think, with my dogs at the time, uh, sometime Thursday night. And sure enough, I was tracking it. It was in South Georgia by like five something in the morning. No lie, it was at our facility at 8.57 uh, from via UPS. Um, we had it together basically uh, just before noon. Oh, and I loved your post. Uh, you know, you had four images at uh, uh, 8.59. <laughs> the Edelbrock box is sitting there with the rotor pack. At like 10.17, the blower's back on the engine. Yeah. At like 11.40, you're on the dyno making dyno pulls. Yeah. So I've been in that situation before, so I knew what was going on. You guys were getting everything you could possibly do to be prepared. So the moment the part showed up, yes, boom. Yes. I already know. I wasn't even yep. there, but I already know the tools were laid out. Nope. Everything you really needed, every hose, belt, fluid was right there ready to go. Basically, we had a couple hours on Thursday <coughs> to say, what are all the little things we need to do? Okay, we got to get the mufflers on the car for True Street. Let's balance the rear wheels. We had just picked up a new set of Mickey Thompson's. Right. Let's get that. Get them on the car. Do this. Do that. All the little things. We were ready to go. Got on the dyno. And uh, kudos to John Lund and 
and his tuning ability, like I sent him an idle log, right? As Jamie's checking the transmission fluid and then free revving it. And John's like, oh, it looks pretty spot on. And he goes, put on the dyno, do a slow rev and then go wide open to five grand. He makes one, one tweak to it, take it to 8,000. Uh, it was at that point. Pretty, pretty confident. Yeah, he's unbelievable. It's crazy. You know, here we are with a kind of a unique combination. We had our stroker crank and good rods in it from the NA motor with some lower compression pistons with your E-Force ported. And uh, yeah, but then he goes to me, he's like, it looks like you might have some belt slip. He goes, power fell off at 7,000 RPMs. Do another pull. I'll be darned if the next pull we didn't have belt stratton going all across the dining room. The dreaded, shredded belt. Shredded belt. So he said, hey, take off that smaller bullet, put on the 275, put on the 275, and uh, it made within one horsepower, nine, uh, 956, I think it was like 870 foot pounds of torque, which is absurd. <coughs> and we said, all right, we're already behind schedule. Let's load it up and uh, head on down south to Bradenton, which then we had multiple blowouts and had to have employees send other wheels and tires yeah. and drive an hour and a half south. I mean, it was nuts. Just the fact that we're here, I mean, it was just, usually something good happens when you have to go through yeah. so much adversity and you still find a way to push forward and uh, That's right. get the job done. Well, Scott, let's back up for a second. So what? What supercharger pulley did you have on it at South Georgia at okay. the Mod Nationals? So at Mod Nationals, we had the 3-1 on there. Okay. And that made about 16 pounds of boost. We went the uh, 869 with a slipping transmission. Um, and what kind of mile an hour? What, 158? 157. 157. 157. Okay. Uh, pulled the transmission out, sent it to uh, Manuel out there at uh, Midnight Performance in Houston, Texas. He sent it back to us. We went out there for one test session in between that was still the completely 100% stock block. And uh, we went an identical 869, but we picked up four mile an hour. It went 161 out the back door. So that was really cool that it went that fast out the back door. So then your first dyno pulls um, with the updated blower and the updated short block, you had the 2.625 yes. 2 and 5 eighths pulley yep. had belt issues just to make sure you got beyond that you backed it up to the 2.75 275 pulley, yep and that's what's on there now correct so how much boost did it make with the 275 pulley even with the 275 it gets to 20 and kind of starts fluttering a little okay. bit so that's why Lund still thinks that there's still a little bit of belt slip okay we just hope it lasts these three passes coming yeah. up here and um yeah, but we're going to probably source out a grip tech pulley for it, make sure it can hold all the boost we're going to throw at it, and yeah. uh, see how deep into the eights we can get this. So talk about your first pass today when you guys showed up the track. So you got in here last night. I'm sure you guys were exhausted from just a, 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 a rugged day of making it to the racetrack. Two two rounds of qualifying in your class were yep. gone. You, you missed. Yep. <laughs> Tell me about the first pass this morning. First pass, uh, rolled up, did the burnout, knocked the stickers off the back tires, and uh, kind of got on it easy on the foot brake. I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, a whole new combination. Right. And uh, it went really well. It went a 123.5, 60 foot, which is easily our best 60 foot ever. The previous best at Mod Nationals was a 130. So we cut seven hundreds off the 60 foot which is crazy those were much better conditions back in november oh yeah than yeah. what we have here uh, in the spring and arguably the best track in the country sgmp so right it was uh it was awesome that it responded like that of course we're fighting a headwind here today right so the car was dancing a little bit at the top end of the track but uh responded with a 850 what was it 855 yeah at uh 160 miles an hour and change. So the mile an hour, I was a little concerned about why was it down a mile an hour. Then again, at the time, I think we had three miles on the motor. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, not many miles on the short right. block. 
Still breaking in. Still breaking it in the right way. <coughs> so then for the second pass, I wanted to lean on the converter a little bit harder. The guy in front of me had just spun, so I kind of got out of the groove a little bit. Um, sometimes the Mickeys can be very forgiving. Yeah. And uh, leaned on the foot brake. I think I saw about 2,900 RPMs. And uh, whoo, it went wheels <laughs> up on that first pass. But I know you've seen pictures, but I wish you could have seen it from my vantage point. It was the most beautiful wheelie. It just <laughs> carried them. It just hung the front tires, carried them out, set them down nice and easy. You stayed in it like you're supposed to do. Yeah. And uh, and then. What was the ET on that pass? Whew, that was an eight, uh, which was an 846 at 162 and change. And it packed up to 123, but it went a 123.4. On the but back on the tires. back tires. So on the back tires. It was, uh, it was super cool. Um, I think it probably made the gear change as soon as uh, it came down. But uh, that, that was awesome. I mean, you, you just... You know, you, you can tighten up the front suspension. I know it'll go quicker. We'll try that tomorrow morning um, in our test hit. I'll get the front nice and tight on it. We'll try to go into the one teens to 60 feet. Um, and uh, yeah, see if we can go a little quicker, try and reset that Elbrock record. Well, I know that uh, after a, a difficult few days, uh, physically, mentally, and emotionally stressful, it's good to shake that monkey off your back and get those first two passes down and have the performance be just, you know, frankly better than we could have expected for the first couple of passes off the trailer. So congratulations to your team. Hey, and, appreciate uh, the support from yeah. you guys. We couldn't do it without Edinburgh, that's I'm, for sure. Well, I'm just glad to be a part of it. And the most uh, exciting part about this is the very same kit that we shipped to Steeda to install on Silver Bullet. Steeda and Edelbrock are doing a giveaway, so you can win that very same kit by going to Steeda.com and registering for the Steeda Edelbrock Supercharger giveaway. So uh, be sure to go check that out, go to that site, register. Uh, we're going to give that away, or we're going to announce the winner, I should say, at uh, Mustang Week. Mustang Week, yeah, at the, the end Myrtle of July. Beach in the end of July. So um, anybody that's watching this, register up you can have the same hardware that's on the Silver Bullet. All right, well that was a quick recap of what led up to the NMRA Spring Break Shootout down there in Bradenton, Florida. As I've said a million times, there's a reason those names are on the side of that Steeda Silver Bullet, because they're simply the best companies you can work with in this industry. If you like what you saw, wanna check out any of those great parts from those manufacturers, click like, subscribe, check out our Steeda.com website where we are giving away an Edelbrock Supercharger at the end of Mustang week in the end of July. Like, subscribe, follow us on all of our social channels, and remember everybody, Steeda, where speed matters.